Hello, I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. And this is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast with eels. Because this week we watch The Girl Who Died and The Woman Who Lived. Written by Jamie Matheson, Stephen Moffat, and Catherine Tregenna. Directed by Ed <laughs> Bazalgat. Oh, God. I wasn't ready. And aired on October 17th and 24th, 2015. Ed Bazalgat apparently directed uh, The Doctor's Meditation. I just always assumed that that was directed by... Directed, written, produced, created, and rule overruled by God Emperor Stephen Moffat. <laughs> I don't think Stephen Moffat has directed an episode of the television show so far. Thankfully, what? What? question mark? What? Oh, directed. Yeah, yeah, directed. Okay. Do you think I said written? Because yeah. that'd just be factually false. <laughs> Unless he's just like pawns off his what writings if, onto, onto some, some rando. What if Stephen Moffat is actually just like a, a ghost? What if like Stephen Moffat doesn't exist and he's just, it's just like, he's All the ghost name is, for a bunch of different writers and like the guy we see as Stephen Moffat is just an actor. Oh, like James Patterson. Except that I, there's a real James Patterson, <laughs> but he just like, the reason why he can write like five novels a year is because he just pawns it off into people who like want to break into the industry <laughs> and they just slaps his name on it at the end. Even though he like coyly tries to avoid this fact in interviews, it's uh, as far as I know well documented. What if that's actually just the the, the lie? Yeah, what if it's actually just him? Well, you have to wonder what the point of that is then. <laughs> just to mess with people or trick people. Just to try to explain away the low quality of his work. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it's uh, it's not me. Uh, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> hmm. What so, if Stephen Moffat is just a, a pseudonym for Russell T. Davies? And what if Chris Chibnall is as well? What if, like, all the documented, like, you know, past, you know, escapades and, like, stuff that Chris Chibnall has done and said were actually just forged and, <laughs> and <laughs> brought into this giant ruse? Well... That'd be kind of wild, because then everybody who's like the Moffat era is so much worse would have to would be forced to admit that it's just the just their the, god Russell T Davies yeah. losing his touch. That, or it's just their prejudices of just someone else taking over <laughs> in name. It reminds me of the theory of Lost Thursdayism, which basically says that you basically can't prove the universe wasn't created last Thursday, and all your memories before that are just implants in your head. No, yeah, this is something I think about quite frequently is you can't prove that, like, everything in the world isn't just a giant conspiracy against you. The whole world's just a simulation. <laughs> the whole world's just your personal style Truman show. Jesus. That's what I kind of thought was going on when Odin showed up in the clouds this For week. all of five seconds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Turns out it was just the mire. The mire. The mire. So, <laughs> was that a rhyme with fire? Yes, fire. Yes, <laughs> I liked these episodes. Yeah, I did too. You know what? Little I paid attention to in these episodes, I really liked. Yeah, since you watched these at like what eleven at night last night? Yeah, around eleven at night. It wasn't so much the time as it was just the the situation I watched them in. I'm not going to go any more detail than that, but it was just very hard to pay attention. The good news about sharing our outlines now is I know exactly when you watch the episodes. <laughs> no, I, I don't always put them in right after I watch or right while I'm watching. Yeah. This was the only one I actually have done that for. I usually write mine during my watch through. So I know. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> I guess. I mean, I have kind of like an upper bound on when you've watched it, right? Because... When you put it in, you're either yeah, watching you know it while you put it, it by. in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not when I'm watching it. <laughs> yeah, so I really like these episodes. I'm trying to decide if I like them better than the the rest of the season. I like the girl who died more. Yeah, the woman who definitely. lived. I think I'd probably put uh, in the middle of this season, which isn't bad because the season's pretty good. Yeah, I. I... I think I agree. I like both of these, but the second episode is, you know, a little less uh, full than the first one, I guess. Or there's, like, a lot of humorous, just, like, jokey scenes. There's definitely, I think, less in it, because I have less on my outline for that episode. And I remember when I was watching the episode, I was like, man, my outline for this episode is pretty sparse. 
even though I was paying like pretty close attention to it. Yeah, these episodes actually are really just straightforward. Uh, and there aren't too many big twists in these episodes, I don't think. The only real twist comes at the beginning of episode two when it's revealed that uh, it's a shielder under the mask. That's but we'll, we'll pretty get there. dang obvious. <laughs> <laughs> so the episodes begin. The first one begins like completely in the middle of of another adventure, a completely unrelated adventure where Clara is just like floating in space. She's like, there's something in my spacesuit, Doctor. And he's like, there's something on my back. <laughs> he's like, it's probably one of those kissing monsters. And Clara's like, wait, what? And the Doc's like, yeah, they suck your brain out through your mouth. That's why they're called kissing <laughs> monsters. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I felt like I'd skipped an episode here. But then I checked and, and no. I didn't skip an episode. Well, it does just kind of throw you right in the middle of the action, like, hello. But it turns out that none of this matters because it was all just a simulation or something? No, the doctor or it was like a remote control like thing. I the don't doctor know. materializes know around on. Clara and oh, really? rescues her. Yeah. Because he's in another part of the galaxy saving some galaxy subjugated four. species. <laughs> And he's asking her for information on what she sees to try and discern her position, I guess. Then he materializes yeah, so, and pulls her helmet off. And the and she's dead. The kissing monster had already yeah. killed. No, no. Yep. And she leaves. <laughs> That's how she leaves. The doctor says like some sort you of eulogy. You just see the doctor like pushing her dead body out of the TARDIS like... I guess I won't be needing this anymore. Uh, and that's really why he dark. finds a shiller, someone who is like suspiciously similar <laughs> looking to Clara. No, no, not really. I don't think so. She's in many ways like the I same mean, type kind of thing. No, I wouldn't say they look all that similar. Eh, I think it's like mm. a Princess Leia, Padme Amidala situation going on here. Slash Ray. Yeah. Slash Slash Jin. Ray. How does Ray fit into all of this? Just very similar. Do you know episode sim- nine spoilers that we don't? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, just very similar looking in uh, in type. Well, she's not Leia's uh, daughter or anything. So, so we, so, <laughs> so we've been told. Anyway. Yeah. I feel, you know, I feel like the thing in episode eight with like Kylo going like, well, you're nobody, Ray. You're just a, you don't fit into any of this at all. Is... <laughs> Is a ruse? <laughs> yeah, somehow. I don't know. The ballsiest thing Star Wars could do is just double down on that in episode nine. He's like, yep, you were just a nobody. <laughs> just have Luke show up as a force ghost and be like, I don't even know who you are. I've never met you in my life. <laughs> well, I, I feel like that was actually, I don't know. I feel like Disney thought that would be a bigger twist than it, it turned out to be. Well, because the way know? it was delivered was it was just kind of shoved in the middle of like another bigger thing that was going on yeah, which is like snoke dying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah i mean i feel like it was supposed to be this thing of like hey everyone in the star wars universe is connected and knows everybody but hey this you know this ray but girl actually no is just here unconnected but then like it's in the middle of all this other stuff going on and you just kind of just kind of kind of goes on flies under the radar with uh, within all this stuff so whatever anyway vikings show up well, it materialized because the doctor's like, I just gotta wipe my boot off because he smashes the kissing monster with his boot. He's wiping his. Oh man, boots. are we gonna count the kissing monster on the death count? Well, we didn't include those rats <laughs> <laughs> way back in like episode two. Yeah, when we said we weren't gonna include animals. That's the thing started... I always point to every time we want to include an animal is those rats. Well, humans are animals, so might as well just delete the death count. <laughs> yeah i guess <laughs> so then the vikings show up and capture them in a mm-hmm. scene that kind of reminded me of that scene in day of the doctor when they're just in the middle of a forest and the queen shows up and is like i'm gonna capture oh, yeah. you guys now oh yeah well they spend two days on a longboat getting back to the viking encampment yeah and they leave the tardis behind these vikings are inferior to marco polo who is like i'm gonna bring this tardis with me so they arrive. Yeah, in the why si- don't these people in like a thousand BC or whatever have the same, you know, capabilities and tech as like a 14th century explorer? What's wrong with them? 
Once they get to the town, the doctor tries to bluff his way into being Odin, but at the exact same instant, uh, another alien decides to do the same thing. No, and this was Odin, right? I mean, he says he was. It's not like he would just <laughs> lie about it. He shows up and he's like, I am Odin. <laughs> And he tells all the, the strongest warriors will dine in Valhalla tonight. And the doctor's like, that's kind of weird. So half the village gets beamed up, the other half stays where they are. Yeah, like all the all the warrior men who go out, most of the warriors who go out hunting, actually, because the shielder's dad also goes out hunting, but he doesn't get beamed up. So you have to wonder if he's the weak link in these hunting parties <laughs> or not. But then... Clara gives a shoulder the glasses, the broken Sonic glasses, because one of the Vikings snaps it in half. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was Haston. Uh, the one who eats it first. <laughs> and she gives it to a shoulder to take Clara's chains off, because the doctor's already got his off, and she's like, how'd you do that? And he's like, magic. And the Maya scan the glasses and realize it's alien tech, so they beam a shoulder and claw it up as well. Yeah, all the Vikings that they beam up die. Haston, I think his name was, is like, guys, what do we have to fear? <laughs> We're Vikings! And he dies. Yep. And they all get... Well, the wall starts pushing them yeah. into this harvesting room, Star I think Wars it's called. Star Wars style, yeah. And Clara is like... Well, if we're going to go into the room, we should just run across and open the door on the other side. So they try to open the door on the other side, and the charging things charge up and smash cut to the doctor sitting on a bench reading his diary. <laughs> and he's just like, yeah. So that's the thing. Guess they're, uh, guess they're going to die. But then uh, it's revealed that Clara and his shield live because uh, fake Odin confronts him and he's like oh yes the testosterone and adrenaline of viking warriors he drinks some adrenaline so much check out blake seven or blake seven podcast he slams it back like a shot of vodka (laughs) it's okay never mind i'm not gonna say what i was gonna say Hmm. (laughs) Hmm. (laughs) turns out that these are the mire a warlike race from the planet mire no i don't know (laughs) Yeah, you know, with warlike tendencies. Very warlike. They're like war in the sense that they have to do a, with war. How can war. A people be like war? <clears throat> they're both things Maybe they're just that exist. Warlord like. Yeah. They're that too. They're one of the most violent races in the galaxies. Clara almost bluffs her way out of this. Almost. But yeah, then but the shielder has to come in and ruin it. Yeah. She's like, we're Vikings. We'll fight you. Uh, and then any as soon as, as, soon as they mire. land, as soon as they get teleported back down, a shoulder goes to her dad and starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, all you had to do is say nothing. <laughs> no one would have even known. Yeah, because Clara, you know, demonstrates the sonic um, sunglasses, I think. Sonic shades. Yeah. And, you know, tells the Meyer that like, hey, we have way more advanced tech than you. You don't want to start this. Just go home. You're not ready for this type thing. But then a shoulder messes it all up. Right. Good old Ashilda, messing everything up, showing up in the worst places. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a reference to a scene we haven't seen yet. <clears throat> so, then what happens is the doctor's like, well, you guys are basically screwed. Have fun. Because apparently the Maya are the like, third most deadly army in the universe. They Something drink like the that. adrenaline and t- testosterone of warriors all across the galaxy to improve themselves well we didn't mention i think we already know at this point that like the meyer leader because the rest of the meyer are sort of wearing jadoon like outfits they have these big like bulky helmets on and the leader is using like a hologram like a hologram yeah to to uh portray his face he shows his real face to a shoulder and clara we don't really get to see Odin's real face, but we see the face of some of the other Maya uh, later on, which I assume are the same, but yeah, I guess we don't they, actually know. <laughs> yeah, they they look kind of freaky, like a little scary. They look like uh, like uh, tapeworms almost. <laughs> really, tapeworms have like five rows of fangs. 
I don't think they do. Uh, maybe they look maybe more they like do. the worms from Dune. The, the, the sand the, worms. The, the David Lynch one. <laughs> Throwback to that movie. The spice. <laughs> the spice must flow. <laughs> he who controls the spice controls the galaxy. So the doctor, they, they sort of go into the Thane Hall or whatever, and, you know, all the, all the warriors have been killed by, by the Meyer. And the doctor goes, so how many of you have ever held a, a real sword before? I have expected everyone to just raise their hands. You know, these are Vikings, pretty, pretty warlike people. Yeah, well, no. But no, no, they don't. Also, didn't Vikings yield, like, axes? I wield, think they, I guess, not I think, yield. I think they just wielded everything, you know, axes, swords, long swords, short swords, you know, broad swords, whatever, maces maybe even. Scimitars. Uh, <laughs> I don't think scimitars. Maybe, maybe scimitars. Daggers. Claymores. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, this this story really brushes over the fact that the Vikings were like rape and pillage all yeah the women i mean the doctor town. saves them but like they probably go on to like devastate some nearby towns <laughs> <laughs> can't change history not one line well he does the doctor even mentions this right now when he's he because he like storms out he's like you guys are screwed and he's like i'm gonna leave and Clara's like you gotta stay and help him and the doctor's like and then what because at the beginning of this episode, the Doctor has this line where he's talking with Clara about how they're time travelers and they create ripples, not tidal waves. You gotta tread lightly. And they go outside and the Doc's like, so if I save them, then what? They overthrow the Meyer and, and, and what? The Meyer basically come back, they bring back a whole fleet and they basically wipe planet Earth off the map. That's Is that what you want to happen, Clara? That's what'll happen, ripples into tidal waves. That's what's gonna happen, Clara. And she's like, yeah, well, you should stay and help them anyway. But then the doctor, I guess, swayed by the power of Clara. He think he sort of because there there's a baby in the village, and he's kind of thinking of the baby and stuff, and and then he decides to stay and help them. Yeah, Clara's like, you just decided to stay, and the doctor's like, how'd you figure that out? And she's like, the baby stopped crying. I'm like, mm. <laughs> baby might have just fallen asleep. <laughs> baby might just be like drinking some milk. You don't know, Clara. You don't know. It's a nice thought, though. Is it the doctor? Yeah. <laughs> what if the baby does just like fall asleep and the doctor's like, damn, now I got to go along with it so <laughs> Clara can think she thinks she's clever. No, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious that that's what's going on. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. The doctor speaks baby. I think this has already happened. Yeah. Uh, the baby is, uh. <laughs> Is I guess he's kind of like Legolas from the 2001 Lord of the Rings, who just like spouts cryptic messages everywhere, right? Just like fire in the water. He says some other cryptic stuff, I believe, but that was the main thing. Yeah, the doctor doesn't know what that's referring to, but he's just like, yeah, we're all gonna burn. He starts training the villagers. Uh, yeah, magnificent in a, in a seven hit. style. Yeah, I wrote that too. I wrote this is very magnificent seven. <laughs> he's got the. He's given them all wooden swords, which you have to wonder. Why they just have wooden swords lying around. Maybe they made all of them. Who knows? And then the doctor's like, no playing around. I'm going to give you all the real swords. Immediate smash cut to the villas just on fire. <laughs> People running around screaming. <laughs> and apparently what happened was like, I think Chuckles. Uh, the doctor gives them all fake names. He's like, look, it's too much to remember all your real names. So you're going to be Chuckles. And Chuckles is the only one who I remember. Yeah, I remember. there was, man, who was the main guy? <laughs> Let Lofty or something. Oh, Lofty, yeah. Lofty, Lofty Chuckles, <laughs> Noggin or something, ZZ Top. <laughs> oh, ZZ Top. <laughs> yeah, Chuckles oh, and uh, Heidi. Chuckles how, you, and, how could you forget oh, Heidi? Heidi's the one who lights the village on fire because Heidi doesn't like the sight of blood and apparently he like cut his finger on his sword and he fell over and like knocked over a lantern while he did it and then someone tried to blow the fire out and said and made it like way worse and there's like one of yeah, them. Yeah, like hit a horse or something or like a horse kicked it down, set some hay on fire. There's a huge, like, Rube Goldberg <laughs> machine of disaster. Explained by Clara. Pretty funny. <laughs> the doctor's like, oh boy, we're totally doomed. But it turns out they have a master plan. Well, that master plan not really. eels. <laughs> Clara's like, you gotta figure out. I almost said the Clara, but I didn't. Still hasn't happened yet. Clara. It's like, what, four weeks to go? <laughs> Clara says, uh, 
to the doctor, like, you always figure out a way, like, right at the final moment. So figure it out, doctor. He's acting really entitled here in the doc. I'm surprised. No, I, I'm I, really no, surprised. I this I'm really surprised the doctor doesn't just go, well, you could bloody help, Clara. Because she kind of just dicks around the village all day not doing anything. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest here. That's what she does. Yeah, no, I mean, you're really railing into Clara in these recent episodes. I'm not reading, like, any of these scenes in that way. I'm not, like at all. I mean, you were the one who railed into Clara last week with the uh, whole I have a duty of care scene where I was like, yeah, I think that's just the doctor being like, I got to protect you instead of the doctor being well, I was railing into the doctor. Yeah. This is the only episode I'm railing into Clara because she doesn't do anything and acts all entitled it's a about Clara it. Clara Light story. The, sec- the second episode is definitely a Clara Light <laughs> episode. Anyway, the doctor deciphers the clue. And well, it he, turns out that there are eels in the village. If only they had known that sooner, they might have not wasted all their time with swords and, and other weapons. Well, the doctor talks with Ashilda, and she talks about how she always comes up with stories when the when the the hunters go away. The, yeah, you know, this is a really interesting scene given what happens later in the episode. There's a lot more to be said here, and I'm not going to be the one to say it. <laughs> really thought you would be given your penchant for talking about stories and metafiction on this podcast. No, no, I got nothing. Yeah, maybe because you were tired out of your mind when you watched <laughs> no, this. No, I, I wasn't, actually. <laughs> but she talks about uh, coming up with stories when the, the hunters go away and the doctor says something like, oh, because you think that if you come up with a story, then that means I'll come back safe, basically. She's like, yeah, basically. Is that what you think, a shoulder? Is that what you think? No, no, he doesn't put it like that. Then, yeah, he figures out they have eels. Kind of have to wonder why they're just storing eels in barrels. There's but food, but, but whatever. I guess. Easy source of food. Pretty sure they're really easy to catch. That's where the that's where jellied eels come from. The famous Great. London More dish, weird jellied food. eels. More weird food. Because they're food. super easy to catch. I don't know how they... Here's the big mystery. Like, how do they get jellied when there was no refrigeration, like back in the 17th century? Ice cubes. <laughs> Maybe. <coughs> Makes you wonder, like, what the jelly even is. Maybe they built a massive Rube Goldberg-like machine like Doc to Brown create ice. in Back to the Future 3, where he has that really elaborate machine. You think it's going to do something cool and just spits out one ice cube at the end of its, like, 20-second <laughs> sequence. <laughs> So, yeah, the doctor realizes they have eels, and they come up with this plan that they don't reveal to the audience. But the doctor does it's say It's not that, that elaborate of a plan, actually. No. But the doctor says that once they get a, a Myers helmet, it's all over. They've basically won. The Meyer, that is. Not, not, not them. They're all going to die. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we see the Meyer come in to the, the hall. Yeah. They're all having fun. They're just having a party, and fake Odin's like, we're supposed to fight. And the doc's like, yeah, we decided not to. We decided we're going to have a party instead. And everyone's like, yeah, party. Except Odin. He uh, he doesn't like any of this. One of them, uh, Ishilda's dad, is throwing... Th- they're playing the game where they, it's basically horseshoes where they throw rings onto sticks. And one of them is throwing uh, rings onto the Myers, like little antenna. <laughs> And then once the Maya realized that something's going awry, uh, the doctor calls out to Chuckles, I think, to activate the eels. <laughs> <laughs> and the eels zap this complex electrical wiring system they rigged <laughs> overnight. <laughs> and it shocks the four Maya standing right there. And the doctor's like, four down, six to go. And I'm like, great. You didn't even half their numbers. <clears throat> But the Meyer are pretty scared by this. Also, the other part of this plan is they've hooked up a shoulder to the Meyer um, uh, helmet, you know, augmented reality hologram thing. That's why they needed to get one of the Meyer's helmet, because they get one of the helmets from these four that they electrocute, and they put it on a shoulder. They drag in one of the, like, Viking dragon boat things. Except tricked out to look even more... Well, they use, well, they well. I mean, they use the Meyer technology to make it look like a serpent. Yeah. Well, when they <laughs> when, before they go into battle, you see a shot of the Doctor and Clara looking at it, and Clara's like, "Wow, it looks terrible." And the Doctor's like, 
perfect. And you don't really understand why that's perfect until later on when you see a Clara's video of the yeah. event. Yeah, so this serpent thing I'm pretty sure is from Norse mythology. I don't know what it's called or like what its purpose is, but but there you go. Yeah, their plan is basically they project the dragon onto the inside of the Meyer's helmets and the Meyer think they're fighting a massive dragon, but they're actually just fighting a longboat and so they all teleport out except for fake Odin who's like, Where are you going, you cowards? But they get all this on camera, and the doctor threatens to upload it to like space YouTube. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Because he comes in, he's like, look, uh, if you never come back here again, then you never have to see this video again. But if you uh, try and invade again, we'll just upload this to the cloud and, and no one will take your army seriously anymore. And he's like, damn, you got me through the power of... of memes. Society. <laughs> and memes. <laughs> this is a very mimetic season. I'm surprised it's actually like all there. Even in this episode, where it's used in like a humorous way. Yeah, and I've like, got we're like not actually, six separate we're, references to other things in these stories too. Yeah, I mean, we're not like, we're not, this isn't a stretch. Like, this is actually all very clear in the episode. Yeah, it's not like we're just pulling this out of a hat, so to speak. <laughs> no, no. It's, hat being it's a PG there. term for, for that phrase. So... Yeah, the Maya run away. Wait, how are hats PG? Hats are like G. I'm not if it's Toy Story. <laughs> what? Wait, what? Toy Story is rated G, but that's definitely a PG at least movie. I mean, that stuff's dark. I think we talked about that. Oh, yes, that. Toy Story 3. <laughs> Gotta love resigning yourself to, to, to death. fiery death in a G rated movie. Gotta love all those sexual innuendos in a G-rated movie. Yeah, but if you're a kid, you're not going to understand those, like, at all. Maybe you just won't understand the whole I movie. I hope. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, back to this. A shoulder yeah, unfortunately dies. Because the doctor says the Maya helmet, like, drained her, her life force, and he, like, is... He seems genuinely surprised about this. Yeah, he didn't... I guess he didn't know... And he kind of runs away and... At this point in the episode, I'll, I'll just interject here. I, I checked the timestamp thinking there was like maybe one or two minutes left, but there's 10 minutes left. Yeah, but it's it doesn't, like, oh boy, it doesn't feel gonna... like they drag it out though. No, it, it doesn't. It's just when I checked it at this point, it was just weird to me that there was, you know, going to be a lot more, like a good chunk of the episode was still to come. Anyway, the doctor is pretty mad. He, he sort of storms off. Yeah, and Clyde comes in. He's like, she's like... This is a scene which uh, demonstrates Clara's character development, I think, because she talks about, like, hey, you know, it doesn't matter, like, we won at the end of the day, and the Doctor's like, but that's not the point. The Doctor says something like, um, hang on, I think I actually wrote this down. Save it for the quote section. No, no, I, I, didn't, no. I didn't actually write this down. <laughs> well, I'm not nicking, nicking it from the quote section because I didn't actually write this down, but he says something along the lines of, like, I'll, uh, I'll win the... Uh, you know, I'll lose the war every day as long as I don't lose any people, basically, is what he says. He, like, he doesn't care about winning the fight. He's upset because he lost someone. He says he's so tired of losing. And Claude's like, but you didn't lose. I mean, you saved the village. It's it's just one person. And the doctor's like, but that one person still matters. Yeah, again, I didn't read it in that negative of a light for Clara. Uh, I mean, I, I think this one this scene is, like, like, pretty... Pretty negative. No, I, I mean, I didn't. Her. I didn't see it so much as like, well, not, well, like, why, why is it a big deal if like one person dies? I saw it as like, yeah, okay, one person died, and that's awful. But you know, look at all the people you saved, type thing. I don't know. I mean, the, just the way I read it was, she was like, just like, well, it's just one person kind of thing. She's, and I don't think it's bad. I think it's just demonstrating like the doctor's normal. Or, you know, the doctor sometimes, the way he feels is like, oh, well, we lost a couple of people, but at the end of the day, we won. Like, the ends justify the means. And the 12th doctor, it, I think it contrasts the 12th doctor well because at the beginning of his his run and throughout, he's like, am I a good person? Like, I don't want to lose anyone. You know, I don't want to be that kind of person anymore who just callously discards people in the name of winning. <clears throat> and maybe Clara's not this callous. She's just pointing out to the doctor, like, hey, like, we we still won. Yeah, I mean, that's that's how I kind of took it. I don't know if I'm explaining this well, but I, I, I sort of saw this as like, you know, you still like, you still saved people. Like, you can fo also focus on like the people you saved as well type thing. 
Yeah, uh, I, guess I don't know. The doctor's kind of taking it harder, I guess, because he formed a personal connection with a shoulder. <clears throat> sure. I guess. But now we find out how Kaikelius is all Fits related into to all of this. <laughs> Because the doctor says that he finally remembers why he chose this face. And we see a scene of the 10th doctor. We see a scene of Donna actually imploring the 10th doctor to save someone, anyone. And the 10th doctor saves Kaikelius. And the doctor's like, that's why I chose his face. And Clara's like, what are you talking about? He's like, I chose his face to remind me to save people. I thought he was going to say I chose this because I realized it's time for me to die. <laughs> I chose like an old face. Wow! Yeah, thoughts, thought, Dark. thought, thought. That's what was gonna. Not that thought. That's what. What am I saying? I thought that's what they were going for. Well, this kind of makes you wonder why the doctor chose Commander Maxil's face <laughs> when he regenerated <laughs> Maybe into the he sixth didn't. Doctor form. Maybe he didn't. I think. I mean, he he says chose in this scene, but I think it's more of like a subconscious thing where he's like, "A man, I realize." Yeah, he says why. in the scene that yeah. it was like a subconscious choice, but a choice nonetheless. Yeah, subconscious or not, still a choice. Yeah, this is what I mean when I say, like, Doctor Who does always does this thing of, like, remember that two seconds of footage we showed you five years ago? <laughs> that was actually important. Time, at least this time they show you the footage. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> remember that random phone call you got, like, a year and a half ago? That was actually me. You know? <laughs> Missy. <laughs> so the Doctor implants a, a Maya medical kit into, into a shoulder's head and it brings her back to life and the doctor st- seemed kind of sheepish about this and he wants to leave before she wakes up and she wakes up she's like thanks and he's like don't thank me yet and he leaves and Clara's like well he he leaves another medical kit with a shield and then he leaves and Clara's like why are you being like so evasive and the doctor's like you know it might be a good choice might be a bad one we'll see time always you know time will tell yeah because he saved a shoulder but basically she's immortal now she can't die from natural causes or like uh, old age yeah, but she could still be killed if someone were to like just shoot her in the head or something. Right. It's just like a functional immortality kind of thing. Yeah, which is why the doctor left another medical kit uh, because he says no one should uh, go through immortality alone or like. And I guess he's speaking from experience here too. He's not immortal, but he's way he's more like, longer yeah. lived than like most people on this show. I mean, he's been alive for two thousand years at this yeah. point. That's like Jamie's it, lifespan fifty yeah. times over. Yeah. <laughs> or more, you know. Jamie lived in what, like the 17th century, 18th century? I guess. Life expectancy was 35, according to A. Schilder. Yeah, but the other thing is that, like, a lot of the times those stats are... Forged, made up. You gotta, you gotta... <laughs> it's, I mean, it's like one of those statistical problems where the mean is, like, super skewed by outliers the and mean. the median is, is typically, typically a better measure of the middle. And... You know, the life expectancy was 35. The mean life expectancy was 35, but that's because so many babies died in childbirth that brings the life expectancy, like, way down. Sure. I mean, I don't think that A. Shoulder is, like, looking at statistics like this. I think she's just saying, like, hey, people die, like, when they're around 35 at this point in time. Yeah, probably. I'm just, like, making a comment <laughs> about the general, like, life expectancy was 35 in the Middle Ages kind of thing, because... That takes oh. into account the I fact that babies die. I think it was way lower die. than 35, like, during the Black Death. <laughs> okay, during the like Black Death. 10. <laughs> during the Black the Black Death. Like, yeah. Like five years old. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that statistic is, like, heavily skewed by the fact that babies died at, at zero. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, I think she's just saying, like, hey, people typically die around the age of 35. Which seems a little low for, like, what is this, 17th century? I think maybe, like, maybe 45, 50, you know? 35 is a little young. Maybe she's like, people who cross paths with me. Maybe yeah, th- what am I talking about? People who cross paths with me die at 35. Maybe this is just a really, really, like, behind Viking village. It's, like, behind the times. It's, like, three centuries behind developing technology. No, but she says this about uh, England in the next episode. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm saying maybe she's like people who cross yeah, but paths she with the remember. nightmare she die She barely remembers the past like as three a... years <laughs> with no, no, that no. episode. Here's, so. she's, she's saying that people who, who cross her path die at 35 on average because she kills them all. And specifically 35. <laughs> no, no, just as like an average thing. You know, maybe she killed great, people she who knows are 60. The, she knows the maybe exact age of all the people she killed. She asks them before they, she kills them. Uh. 
Anyway, that's how episode one ends. So this is where I wanted to stop and talk about a couple things. Yeah, well, let's just not forget the scene with a shoulder and sort of the camera sort of rotating around her and days and weeks and months and probably years are going by. As she gets sadder and sadder. She apparently doesn't age either from this Maya implant. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a time lapse kind of scene. Yeah. A picture of this is what the wiki chose as its header image. Pretty pretty, uh, good choice there, I would say. Yes, because you're the foremost expert on this. <clears throat> yeah, the wiki I mean, you uses are. some. Yeah, I mean, the wiki uses some pretty, pretty non-noteworthy in the episodes themselves pictures for the episodes. Generally, I think mine yeah. are typically better than what the wiki chooses. You picked a better one uh, for because, Mummy on the Orient uh, Express than I did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, my googling skills are uh, fairly strong, so I can usually find pretty good images. <laughs> <laughs> Could always just watch the episode and take a screen cap. Actually, I don't think Amazon lets you do that, does it? I'm Amazon sure there are ways might have around some it. I'm sure there are ways around that. DRM that prevents you from screen capping your screen while you're watching something on Amazon. Not that I've tried. I haven't tried either. Anyway, yeah, so I wanted to talk about uh, a couple things. Uh, the one thing I wanted to talk about was uh, how this episode kind of makes the entire uh, overarching plot of last season, but better in one episode. <laughs> I don't even remember what the overarching plot was. It was something having to do with someone named Danny Pink. I don't even remember who that was anymore. I think I've just excluded all of that season from my memory. Much like the Doctor probably does. (laughs) But it, it, uh, I mean, it makes the whole point about, like, the Doctor being a soldier and and being, like, a... Oh, God. Danny Pink calls the the Doctor out for being, like, a general who gives orders and... And Season never eight. fights in the in the trenches. In this episode, there's a couple scenes where like a, a shoulder will be talking with the doctor and is like, "Yeah, you're you're like a warrior. Like you you fight. You're training us to fight. You're like doing a better job than we've done in the past like couple weeks <laughs> because these people are like not fighters at all, and we might like actually have a chance here." And even at the end of the episode, when they're like all celebrating, there's this element of like, "Well, the doctor trained all of them." in the art of warfare basically to beat the third best army in the galaxy yeah maybe he's the one who turned all the vikings into like you know the (laughs) because well i mean it actually doesn't seem you know you think of vikings and they're kind of like spartans right and at least in my mind where it's like all right most of them are are um are warriors Mm -hmm. uh but that's clearly not the case in this village right so maybe this was all the doctors doing that like now they start their like campaigns of destruction right possibly (laughs) i mean i wouldn't put it past yeah Moffat to do something like that, if he was a uh, one, for, if he was one for not doing things subtly, which isn't typically the case. <laughs> I think I used a double negative tra- in that sentence. <laughs> I don't know. It just it just to me like d- kind of brought to the forefront this whole idea that the Doctor is a soldier but doesn't want to be. Especially in the scene where he's talking with Clara, like she died, and like I'm tired of losing people, and Clara's like, "Hey, it doesn't matter." Like, it's okay, basically, because you saved the village and the doctor's like, yeah, but I don't want to be that person who just like, oh, we lost someone, but we saved the village. Like, I, that's not who I want to be, kind of thing. Just, like, better than the last season, because the last season just, like, never really got to that point until maybe in Dark Water, Death in Heaven, when he's talking with Missy and she's like, I got you an army to conquer the galaxy with. And I was like, I don't want an army. I don't need an army. And... I don't remember who it was, but they basically say, like, yeah, but you basically turn whoever you're helping into an army when you go and land and help. That's what he did here. Like, explicitly, it's what he did here. Yeah, I also wanted to mention something here uh, that's kind of, it's pretty similar to, to, or it has to do with all of this, of, like, there's this scene between the Doctor and, and Clara, they have this conversation, um, where this is where Clara is like, hey, Doctor, like, you're turning all these people into warriors type thing. And the doctor realizes, I think, that that's kind of what he's done to Clara. He sort of made like a mini version of himself with Clara. Yeah. Uh, and I think that really works because Jenna Coleman decided to stay. Because mm-hmm. we've had her for what, two and a half seasons at this point. I think if this was a new companion, this wouldn't hit home as, as much as it does with, with Clara here. Yeah, I think so. And it's something that definitely is a an overarching theme of this season that Clara is just a mini doctor. I know we mentioned it in, which is familiar. Yeah. I mean, this all started with Rory 
uh, in Vampires of Venice, they kind of touch on this, and they've been dancing around this subject, kind of bringing it up here and there since then, and now it's all coming to fruition with Clara. And they'll come more to the forefront even throughout the rest of the season uh, with the Doctor recognizing what he's done. The Doctor mentions his duty of care in this episode again, which I think is again another recognition that he's like another weary, recon- I guess, of the things he's done to Clara. Yeah. The only other thing to note here is that uh, a shielder is a hybrid now. Throwback, hybrid plot yeah, line. Right. Anyway, so episode two, The Woman Who Lived. I was surprised, actually, I didn't remember this when I watched it, that, that The Girl Who Died ends with a to-be-continued and not with a preview of the next episode. Yeah, so just solidifying that it's, the production crew at least thought that these were connected yeah more heavily than some people i guess do yeah i think this is our first two-parter though that's written by two different people where each part i guess is written by two different people yeah so first one is jamie matheson and and stephen moffat Moffat, i guess co-writing and the second one is Catherine tregana tregana i don't really know yeah you know you gotta wonder why stephen moffat has a credit there because there are a lot of instances where he doesn't have the writing credit but he still steps in and, and actually does a lot in terms of the writing might have been a more explicit partnership kind of deal than before. I feel like maybe before this, his role was in writing the episodes was more of a script editor kind of thing than a co-writing the episode. Yeah, I mean, but there are definitely like explicit like things of, hey, Stephen Moffat stepped in. I don't have examples of this, but it's, I mean, there are numerous examples of like, hey, Stephen Moffat stepped in and like rewrote this portion. <clears throat> but yeah. yeah, I guess it's more of an editor role. Or an Andrew but, uh, Cartmel. Yeah. Oh boy. <clears throat> then a Douglas Adams. Douglas Adams was script editor. Yeah, but he was like more heavily involved in the writing. Oh yeah. You remember that one episode where he used like a pseudonym? He co wrote an episode with someone else and they used a pseudonym to like hide the fact. Also because he couldn't be. He co- wasn't the only or first one to do that. <laughs> yeah, because that was the BBC had those rules that the script editor couldn't write an episode for his own program. They, they still have all those weird rules, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> there still is technically a script editor position on Doctor Who. Not that I could name who it was because they have like a much less of an influence on the show. I guess, uh, in comparison to the classic They're show. are not the god emperors they were during the classic show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the second episode starts with just a random highwayman holding up a carriage. And the doctor it's lands. a shoulder. It's pretty damn obvious. Her name is Lady Me now. <laughs> All right, whatever. So the doctor, the doctor then is like following his little beeping device and he walks into this holdup and... Me is like, what are you doing? This is this is my hole up. And the doc's like, just just looking for something. And it points him to the trunk in the back. And he's like, oh, it must be in here. And then the, the carriage storms off because the doctor's interrupted the highwayman. And the doctor's like, damn it. Now I'm going to have to chase after the carriage again. And me tears off her. She tears off her mask and is like, oh, great old man. Nice to see you again. The doctor's like, a shoulder? She's like, who's a shoulder? Right, so... They have a lot of catching up to do, which they do. I remember when this scene was in the trailer for this season, the scene where the Doctor recognizes me and is like, are you again? It was in the trailer for the season, and I remember speculation was running rampant about who this could possibly be, and pretty much everyone was like, yeah, this is going to be a returning character, right? <laughs> yeah, of- it is, it is. It's <laughs> oh, a shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I really duped you there. A lot of people were like, oh, this is going to be Susan. This is going to be Susan. She's going to come oh, back. Oh, yeah, I remember this. <clears throat> I totally remember this. I was trying not to, like, dig too deep into it at the time um, because of spoilers. But, like, I totally remember when people were like, hey, Susan's, like, for sure coming back. There's, like, not even a question about it. And then it. Stephen Moffat had to come out and he's like, no, no, guys, this is, this is a new character. And they're like, well, but then why does the Doctor recognize him? And, not, and Stephen's <laughs> like, just just wait. Just watch the season. You'll see. It's It's a new character. I just wanted to bring that up because I thought it was pretty funny looking back on it. Yeah, looking back, like, why was the Susan hysteria, like, just so prevalent? Like, why exactly was... I guess guess because Maisie Williams draws, like, a passing resemblance if you squint your eyes and, like, tilt your screen (laughs) to Carol (laughs) and Or maybe this was, like, kind of... I mean, this is within the wake of the 50th anniversary so maybe this is like, hey, they got all these actors to play these old characters. Maybe they'll bring them back in some capacity on the show. Yeah, and in the wake of 
the monster being revealed to be a woman now and bringing back that classic Oh, so like character. Susan maybe regenerated or something. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that too. That would be really interesting. I never even thought, I mean, obviously I thought of like, hey, what if they brought Susan back? Uh, but I've never thought, like the the fact that she could have regenerated never crossed my mind. Maybe she's been back. Maybe some, some random, random character, character in like Paradise Towers was in Paradise Towers. <laughs> that was the bloody story you went for when you were saying that Paradise Bloody Towers. Uh. <laughs> I don't know why that reminded me that Big Finish is doing a Greatest Show in the Galaxy prequel that like shows the genesis of the Greatest Show in the Galaxy and has like the first incarnation of the Master involved and. Yeah. Hey, man. Better than a Lord of the Rings prequel. Better than a Rocky prequel. Oh, those well, are both, no, both, no. both projects Maybe that are in not. development. <laughs> the Rocky prequel might be might be better. Who? <laughs> I mean, no, though. It'll just be him fighting random street boxers. <laughs> he doesn't really like have a career until the first Rocky movie. He started boxing when he was fifteen. Yeah, but just boxing like random people in like a. They, look, street ring. I'm sure they'll create a good story about it. Rocky's I... a 40-year-old franchise <laughs> with zero bad movies in it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've seen six out of the eight, and I'd say they're all at least good. I've seen eight out of the eight, and I'd say seven of them are good, and one of them is eh. What, what's, the, what's the eh one? Five. Three, oh, five? Yeah. I thought you said you liked five the most. No. I said I liked four better than five oh. and six better than four. Check out Triple Play. That season coming soon. TM. C. <laughs> R. Rights. R. Is it what? Yeah. Rights. Res- rights whatever. Reserved. Whatever. Anyway, so the doctor and me kind of just talk for a bit. A, a lot. Actually, not for a bit. For like a lot. <laughs> yeah. It turns out that me, a.k.a. the bandit formerly known as a shielder. <laughs> Uh, has a pretty dark past. Yeah, she's she's lived for thousands of years. Not thousands. Like uh, a thousand. A thousand. I about think. a thousand, yeah. yeah. She had a baby during the, the... She had multiple babies, I think. Yeah, multiple babies. They all died. And then she swore off having babies. And do you get the idea that all the people she's ever known, loved, cared about, etc. Are dead. Are dead. The doctor warns her that a fire is going to come through London in a couple of years. He's like, oh, I bet you started. He's like, uh, no, that was the uh, uh, pteroleptals. Uh. <laughs> it was. Uh, the, doctor faci- the doctor facilitated it. <laughs> I don't remember that story very well, but wasn't it Adric? I'm just going to pin it on Adric. That was the story where the sonic screwdriver got destroyed. The visitation. Oh, yeah, the visitation. Maybe that's the one Susan was in. I only even remember that because I've seen it twice. Really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. the one you decided to rewatch? No, I actually watched it before we watched it on the show. So. Oh. So the show was my rewatch. This podcast, I mean, the show. Well, weird. <clears throat> uh, anyway, A. Shoulder has ripped out some pages from her diary, which the doctor goes to read. This is how he actually figures out about her sort of dark history. Yeah, she's... Uh, she keeps a diary to keep all her memories straight because she's lived so long that she has difficulty remembering like everything. So she writes it all down. I have to wonder if she carries this like massive room full of diaries with her because she says she's faked her death multiple times. I'm like, well, how did you like bring this whole room full of diaries with you? But whatever. Probably she did. I mean, it's very hard to like transport any of this stuff in, you know, before cars. Me's British accent sucks. I made a note of. It's not British at all. I mean, At one she point, is, she, she, has Viking, the, she so. has the doctor a mask, and yeah. she's like, you're going to need a mask. <laughs> <laughs> mask. <laughs> I swear to God, it's what she said. It's what she said. <laughs> We're skipping over the most hilarious and also semi-important part of this entire thing, which is that there's like a lion man lurking in the bushes. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's all he's doing right now. He's just joking in the bush. The, the first scene where where a shoulder, sorry me, sort of confronts him, I was like, that guy kind of looks very you know cat like, and kind of looks like a giant lion man. <laughs> that just must just be me. He's uh, broken me, out of a new now. broken out of a new cat's trailer. <laughs> oh God! Even I've seen that. <laughs> 
you know, I think people would be happy if this is what that trailer looked like. <laughs> I don't see a problem. If I'm being honest, I don't see a problem with it. <laughs> it's just so freaky. And, and I mean, I guess the like Maybe original the production point. like looked that way as well. I don't know. I, I think, think they should so. just make like a Cats 2 or like a Cats reboot <laughs> with with like just cat videos. You know, cat videos on the internet really aren't too big anymore. They were bigger in like, I don't know, 06, 07. And uh, there should just be a documentary in homage to that. All right. There's a Phantom of the Opera sequel, which is probably the level of quality that the cat <laughs> sequel would be if they made one. So, yeah, then they, the doctor and me go to break into this house. Yeah, uh, because we we neglected to mention that they're looking for this jewel called the Eye of Hades or something like that. Yeah, that's what it's called. And me is sort of evasive about what this thing does, um, but it's going to open a portal to another dimension slash space. But also there's some innuendo, I feel, in this description that indicates that she wants it, it so that she can finally die. It yeah. turns out not to be the case, but it sort of seems... She, she yeah. insinuates that, too, when she goes off to fight... We, should, we see this flashback. She goes to fight a war, and the doctor's like, you could have died. And she's like, maybe I wanted to. Right. <clears throat> and then they yeah, they break into the house. They steal the jewel, and as they're leaving, the doctor knocks over something, yeah. <laughs> which alerts the housekeepers to their presence. So they have to escape. And while they're going back to Lady Me's house, they meet Sam Swift, the other high, the, right. the, the other lesser known <laughs> highwayman <laughs> who's overshadowed by the nightmare. We, I guess is what we should mention is what Me's called when she's right. the highwayman. They sort of have a pun off. The nightmare name actually in itself is a pun because if you watch with subtitles on, you realize that it's the nightmare, K-N-I-G-H-T, mare. Yeah. <clears throat> I think there's a wanted poster that spells it that way, too. Oh, yeah. Weird, considering most people couldn't, like, read at the time. Well, me can. <laughs> yeah. Given her swath of diaries. <laughs> so they sort of have... They, she and, and Sam Swift go back and forth. There's some pretty funny banter. We didn't mention that the, the heist scene actually is a humorous scene as well, so it's, it's not all that tense. Uh, it's more comedic, I'd say, than... Than tense. Yeah. This whole episode is pretty much more comedic than tense. Even in the final moments, like... Well, I actually... I liked that these two episodes kind of did that. They walked, like, that very Doctor Who-ish line of, like, humor and seriousness, I think, really well. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Because the final scene is, like, pretty humorous, but also pretty serious, because Mii's having a meltdown about what she's done, but... Yeah, similar to the first one, I mean, with the, the Meyer, the, it's like, the... Oh, the, the shoulder slash Mii's fault, both these episodes. <laughs> if only me had never been born. <laughs> That's, like, the takeaway <laughs> from all of this. <laughs> so it turns out that me has been planning... You need a sacrifice to activate the jewel. Yeah, because Lion Man Leandro comes in, and apparently me has been planning to steal this eye ever since Leandro crash-landed in her backyard. Yeah, because Leandro's backstory is that he's sort of, um, uh, he's ousted royalty, his planet had been invaded and destroyed. Allegedly, and, yeah. which I think is a lie, given, yeah. given the end of the story. I mean, he is a lion. <laughs> <laughs> he looks a lot like the Cowardly Lion from Wizard of Oz. As I wrote in my notes, we meet the Cowardly Lion. The doctor says something like, uh, so go on, kill me then. And the lion's like, no, no. It's like, why would you want us to kill you? And the doctor says, like, I just want you to attack first so my conscience is clear. <laughs> but they just tie him up. Yeah, because the, the guards, some guards bust in and, and me's like, quick, that guy's working with Lady Me. Capture him. <laughs> and the doctor's like, wait, what? No. But it turns out the corrupt guards are the key to all of this. because the doctor- Incompetent guards. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they're back. Put it in the meme flow analog. <laughs> They're back. I do feel there's this, there's something slightly off or wrong about like the meme flow analog as a concept, as JB mentioned actually in his email. Maybe but I was thinking we'll maybe we should see. just scrap that section yeah, specifically. I didn't think so too. Maybe, but we we committed to this format for one season at least, so we can. I think we, we should scrap it. I think we should just go with it for one season. All right. 
So the guides, they're like, yeah, there's a bounty on your head. A whole 20 pounds. And the doctor's like, 20 pounds? I know where Lady Me keeps all her gold. At least 30 pounds. <laughs> and they're like, well, why didn't you just say that? <laughs> hey, 30 pounds was a fortune back in the day. It's probably like, what, 35, 36 pounds today? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, but I think the scene was supposed to be humorous. No, it, it was, yeah. Humorously playing off the uh, the fact, uh, I don't know, inflation, I, I guess. Yeah, and, and just incompetent, greedy guards. So they're going to sacrifice Sam Swift. Well, because he got captured and he's going to be hung. You have to imagine he's such a well-known character, how he hasn't character like in in the town like how he hasn't been caught and hung before yeah. this he's sort of joking around you know on he's his making jokes with bed, the hangman guess, yeah he makes a joke about uh sleeping with all the women in town. The women in town and not knowing the names and they're like boo and he turns to the hangman he's like good thing you're here or they'll kill me Apparently he's going to be hung specifically at noon, but he's allowed up on the gallows to make jokes like up to 15 minutes before he's getting hung, I, he's, I guess. He says, as long as I keep you laughing, uh, I get to live. Because, I mean, this is all just for the spectacle of it, right? It's for the show. So as long as they're entertained by him being alive rather than him getting killed, Lady Me shows up, pays off the hangman. <laughs> Hangman's about to hang him, but then the doctor shows up and Swift's like, doctor, doctor, help me. And the doctor's like, uh, uh I'm running out of patience. Which I didn't get at first, and I was like, oh, haha, patience, like, patience with a C, but also, like, patience with a T. <laughs> They're yeah. also kind of having a witty bants back and forth. But then me just like, well, screw this, and just slams the jewel right onto Sam Swift's chest, and he's like, ah! Opens a portal, and now the, um, what are they called, the Leo? Le- Leandro. The- no, the the species. Oh, the, the Le- Leonids, Leonids or something? Leonids. Well, their entire invasion force is just there, ready to invade Earth. Yeah, and me's like, I'm finally going to get to leave. And Leandra's like, you're not going anywhere, little girl. And she's like, wait, what? He's like, yep, I'm invading this planet. And the doctor's like, totally call it. <laughs> the doctor's like, I knew it. From the moment I saw you, I knew it. And me's like, god damn it, I've been lied to. And the doctor's like, yep, knew it. You should have trusted me. I didn't see this coming. Trust, should have trusted me. <laughs> there were a lot of, um, you know, missed opportunities, I think, in this episode for me puns. There Don't were a worry. couple. We'll get a solid one later on. We'll get a solid one later on. But the doctor and me deduce that if the gate only opens, um, you know, being powered by death, then if they reverse death, it'll close again. Turns out me has saved the medical kit for all these hundreds of years. And they use it to bring Sam Swift The doctor's like, why didn't you use it on someone? She's like, didn't feel like anyone was worthy. Yeah, which is, it's that's pretty dark. I mean. It's very it's, dark. Yeah, yeah. Considering we see like flashbacks to her past and, you know, she's had children. She didn't think the children were worthy. Yeah. She didn't think any of the numerous people that's implied that she's ever cared about, loved, known, or been I'll, an acquaintance with. I'll give her a pass on the children though, because it seems like she's never aged. And if she put it into her like baby, then that. I guess she's thinking that baby would be a baby for like ever, which would kind of suck. Yeah. Also, there's this thing of of like you know maybe she she kind of she wants to die in this episode, or at least she implies that very heavily. And I guess she doesn't want to like have someone else suffer the same fate or whatever. Right. Yeah. But yeah, so the reversal of the the portal, Leandro's like, no, no, my people will kill me. Don't do this. The doctor's like, yeah, well, they'll kill the whole planet if I don't, so. Yeah, kind of a nice wrap-up to, like, you know, maybe it is just okay for one person to die to save everyone. (laughs) Ha-ha! Yeah, but only if it's the enemy. (laughs) No, yeah. I mean, that is weirdly, like, kind of lurking there in this scene of, like, yeah, I guess it's okay then. I guess, but not really. No, not really. Because Leandro's like, like, yeah, he's part of the invasion force. I mean, it'd be like if the doctor was upset in... Girl who died that, like, one of Maya ate it. And no, he's like, yeah. uh, no, it's, I didn't want to lose one of them. Right. It's it's not... I don't think any of the Maya actually died in that final scene, but it's it's not played that way. It's just kind of there if you think about it. Yeah. Anyway, they're all best buddies now because Sam Swift is back. I guess they canceled his hanging. You kind of <laughs> suck if, like, after all of this, they're like, well, I mean, we still have a hanging to do. Well, they were going to hang the doctor, too. 
like when they decided not to hang Sam, they're like, let's hang the doctor. Yeah. Hang him. Doc's like, uh, please no. And that's when Lady Me slams the brooch onto his chest. Yes, yeah, so we see all of them in a pub and Yeah, Swift goes to get some more drinks and Me's like, so is he immortal now? And he's like, Well, I don't know. I mean the the power of the the crystal might have cancelled out any of the long life that the chip would have given him, but also I don't know. And she's like, You just made that up, didn't you? And he's like, Yep, just I have absolutely no clue. He mentions Jack Harkness. Heck yeah. He's like, yeah, you know, I used to know, I used to travel with an immortal. And I'm like, oh yeah, he's got a reference for mana. Jack Harkness. And I'm like, okay, I guess that counts too. I mean, if he, like, the first character I would think of on Doctor Who, if you said the word immortal, would be Jack Harkness. Yeah, my first thought was Romana. Don't know why that was. To be honest, no, my I first, really don't know why. Actually, my first thought would be, uh, Darkness, Dementia, Ebony, Raven, whatever her name was, from my immortal. <laughs> also, it's Inobi. Oh, yeah. I forgot. How could I forget? <clears throat> I found a complete... I'll link this in the show notes, but I found, like, a my immortal, like, complete edition that's done in, like, a nicely formatted PDF with, like, footnotes and, and all this stuff. <laughs> at the top of the thing it's like it says like world classic literature series or something <laughs> there's even I mean, pictures in 300 years someone might uncover that oh my a literature goodness. student might uncover that and be like this is the greatest piece of work ever <laughs> I did read an article once that contended that my immortal was the greatest piece of writing in existence because it had to have been written by someone so intelligent to make it sound like, it was intentionally written to sound just so poorly, but the, like, meta references in the story, like, betray the fact that it was written by someone with that intent. Yeah, there's definitely, <clears throat> like, a huge school of people who are like, this is all just, you know, a joke. Like, this is just yeah. a fan parody of bad fan fiction. But we'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it ends with the Doctor talking. Uh, well, actually, what it ends with is after the, the Doctor's talking with me, and she's like, I'm going to have to stay around, you know, for all the people you leave behind. And the Doctor's like, that sounds kind of ominous. Are we enemies now? And she's like, no, no, just like, let's just... Frenemies. Frenemies, yeah, basically. And then at the very end, Clara pops into the TARDIS, because we didn't mention Clara doesn't appear anywhere no, in the story no. until right now. This is one of the most companion light episodes of any companion light episode. Oh, but we'll have a more companion light episode this season. Oh, boy. Just you wait. She pops in and she's like, hey, remember that person you took? She was doing an imaginary interview with Winston Churchill. But you took her to meet the real Winston Churchill. And he's like, yeah, well, she should have played up the imaginary part. And she's like, well, she sent you a selfie as a gift. And the doctor looks at the selfie and just standing, like, really creepily in the background, actually. It's <laughs> yeah. just me. Yeah, this standing is actually, behind the fence, like, staring at This seems very sinister. <laughs> if I didn't know better, I would be like, me is going to come back as a villain at this point. Yeah, me too. <laughs> She's just standing there, like, watching, just, like, just staring. And I'm like, how did Clara not notice that? But anyway. Let's also not gloss over the fact that Clara's also in this selfie. And she's doing, like, the weird, like, 2015, like, Jaden Smith face where she's like. This was in 2015. Yeah, making the face, but nobody on the podcast is going to know what the hell you're talking about. I should, just, like take a kinda... I should just take a picture of you right <laughs> no, now and you no. put in the show notes. Hell no. It's like the thing where you squint, and like, but your eyebrows are like turned in a really weird direction, and your mouth is like, just, I don't know. You have to put a picture in the show notes. It's, it's, I'll just put a picture of Jaden Smith, because it's what he kind of looks like. Or like he, he does that a lot. Jaden Smith's a pretty cool guy now, actually. He brings clean water to Flint, Michigan. Sweet. Guess if you can't be known for your acting, you gotta be known for something. <laughs> He's doing a better job than the government. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, that's how it ends. And we get yeah. a preview of next week, which brings back the Zygons. Yep. The Zygon invasion and the Zygon inversion. So what I wanted to talk about here at the end is uh, me talking about uh, again, I guess linking into that whole last season, but done better thing where me's like, I'm going to have to stay around for like all the people you leave behind. Like, like me, <laughs> like me. Cause she wants to travel with the doctor throughout the episode. And I was like, no, I can't travel with another immortal. That's like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I guess he doesn't want to, because it's like, I guess it's, I, I kind of get the idea that he's seeing what's happening with like him and Clara 
And I think he's afraid of that happening with like another immortal and then having basically two doctors running around in the TARDIS and just like it being a total like disaster yeah, show. Yeah, don't want another River Song situation. <laughs> yeah, that's the other person who's immortal who I would imagine <laughs> like the doctor would reference, but, but, but no, Jack Harkness. Jack Harkness, like, I don't know. I just feel like he, he stands out more. It's like, it's no surprise to me that he mentioned Jack Harkness in, in reference to oh, You're referencing a better era of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's interesting how these two episodes basically accomplish everything that Stephen Moffat wanted to do last season, but like more succinctly, better, well, and just you know all around yeah, just more enjoyable. I mean, who knows, right? Who knows? But in my opinion, can we really know for sure? Probably not. But we can have opinions. Anyway, so all no, the re- some opinions are more right than others. The other thing is all the references I noted this week, again, because there seems to be like an overwhelming amount of references this season, or maybe just now that I'm keeping track of them, I'm noticing them more. Uh, the Doctor has a 2,000-year diary, which is in the exact same font and style as the 500-year diary that the second Doctor walks out of the TARDIS with in The Power of the Daleks. Uh, he it directly says he reverses the polarity of the neutron flow uh, in The Girl Who Died. Uh, the Doctor, the whole scene with Kaikilius and Donna, obviously. Uh, the pteroleptal scene and Jack Harkness. So again, quite Sweet. a quite a bunch of references this week. Yeah. Again. Uh, were those your 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 quotes? No, I've got actual quotes. To, okay, let's just move on to that then. We've got to do Sonic Screwdriver oh, first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have uh, triple question mark, which is what I usually write for unknown purpose. Yeah, I have unknown purpose. Uh, lighting a candle. And also opening his chains in the first episode. Well, he doesn't use the sonic shades to, to do that. No, but Clara does. Clara, uses, to, Clara he, gives he it to... He just says magic, and we don't see how no, he does Clara it. No, Clara gives the shades to a shoulder to open her chains, and it does. I don't remember that, but okay. That's how the Maya scan them, and that's why the Maya beam them up, because they recognize the alien technology oh, in the shades. Yeah, yeah. No, my yeah, so, well, no, we have the Sonic Screwdriver usage section where we rank, remember? Oh, right, We decided right, to it. add this. So, uh, I mean, I, I came up, I know I said I wasn't going to do individual ones or we weren't going to do individual ones, but I did. Okay. And I don't think you did, so this is perfect. <laughs> uh, so I rated this one a spork, you know, it's... Spork. Yeah, you know, it's, you don't notice its use when you're using it, but when it's gone... You, it, it comes more to the forefront, right? The sonic shades were a little out of commission this episode. They were destroyed. Yeah. And you sort of notice that. You know, whereas, you know, I mean, we notice because we keep track of it. But but you notice even if you're not keeping track of it is what you're saying. Yeah, like, you know, sporks, right? They're, if, you're, if you don't have one, you're like, man, I really wish I had like a spork right now to eat this food that I'm trying to eat. Now I just have to like eat it with my hands. Or So it's conspicuous by its absence, basically. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to... Yeah. I don't know why your first thought is when you're eating the food, like, damn, I wish I had a spork to eat this <laughs> and not like a fork or a spoon, depending. What about a... Shoot, I saw a fork knife hybrid once, and it was a... Uh, a cork? I don't remember what they a, called a it. A fife? Something like that. It's basically just a fork where one of the prongs has, like, a serrated yeah, it's edge like a, on the like side. Yeah, like an airplane fork. Yeah. Those plastic forks they give you on an airplanes so that you can't like kill someone with them. <laughs> anyway, so hijack quotes. a plane with a plastic spoon. A plastic spoon. Yeah, yeah. Quotes. That All reminds right. me of that time in elementary school. Where I tried to grind down a spoon to make a Jesus knife. a shiv. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to see if it was possible, and it was. Jesus. <laughs> Grounded down on the asphalt. Wow, that's some prison shit right there. <laughs> Trust your prison. <laughs> anyway, quotes. <laughs> I I just had one. Gods never actually show up. The Doctor, twenty fifteen. Yeah, fives, five quotes. Might uh, I got that yeah. one actually right. as well. well. <clears throat> I've also got uh, the weird time travelers who tread softly. It's okay to make ripples, not tidal waves. Uh, immortality isn't living forever. Immortality is everyone else dying. Uh, I live in the world you left behind. And this one was my favorite. I kept your heart beating, but I didn't think it would rust from living so long. Wow. When the doctor was talking That's to me. a little uh, flowery. <laughs> a little flowery, but also apt. When the doctor's talking about how me is just like become this cold-hearted killer, basically. 
Dong Sang, I didn't realize that that's what would happen to you if you lived so long. I thought the power of human, what does he say? I thought the power of human, the human spirit would like overpower nope. anything else, but apparently <laughs> not. Apparently not. So. Yeah, and as far as the doctor being awkward, I just have the one in, in uh, the girl who died uh, where he says I'm not a hugger. Yeah, he's going to go hug Clara, but then he stops and, and just gives her a thumbs up instead. Yeah. But then he hugs her anyway. He's like, God, I thought I lost you. Character development. Character development. Really like the 12th Doctor. Yeah, he's probably my favorite. He's my favorite. Doctor. He's definitely Just overall, favorite. I think. Yeah. I mean, we're not at the end yet. He still has like a season and a half to ruin it all. Yeah, but he won't. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, that's all I have to say. Same here. You can email us at thedoctorbaconvegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry rants, love letters, your thoughts on the girl who died and the woman who lived. You can find us on YouTube at Decorative Vegetable, plus on Apple Podcasts and Google Play at Trust Your Doctor. Be sure to leave a rating if you like the show. Check us on Facebook, Trust Your Doctor, like us on Facebook, also check us out on Twitter at TYD Podcast, and follow us on Twitter. And next time we're going to be watching the Zygon Invasion and the Zygon Inversion. But until then, the end. <laughs>